Why do people get addicted to almost anything? What makes you feel good? Could be succeeding at a hobby, eating your favorite food, or consuming alcohol. Maybe it's a puff on a cigarette, or even a trip to the mall. For some, it's Vicodin, or perhaps heroin. These experiences don't always lead to addiction. So what makes a particular habit or substance addictive? Why do some people go through addicted experiences even if they are costly or detrimental to their health and relationships with people they love the most? Think of it this way. Addiction is a biopsychosocial disorder. It's a combination of your genetic potentials mixed in with your neurobiology and how that interacts with psychological and social factors in your life. Addiction is a disease like type 2 diabetes, cancer, and heart disease in that it can be preventable and treatable. Everyone's path to addiction is different. What you try can be influenced by a parent or peer's actions or just one's personal curiosity. So what's the common factor across all substances and behavioral addictions? Is there anything that's common to all forms of addiction? Yes, it's the release of the chemical in the brain called dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter involved in processing rewards in the brain, making people more likely to go for instant gratification, like that dessert staring at you, rather than waiting for a more beneficial reward like a healthier body. This feel-good chemical, dopamine, makes us more impulsive, a new study suggests. Dopamine is necessary for a healthy life and critical for our survival. When someone uses a drug or engages in a pleasurable experience, the same natural reward circuitry is activated. There is a big issue, a very big issue, and that is that drugs can do a better job stimulating dopamine activity than natural rewards can do. This creates our big problem. Here's what I mean. Different drugs can tap into the dopamine reward system in different ways. For an example, marijuana and heroin have a chemical structure similar to other neurotransmitters. These drugs can trick some brain cells into activating neurons that use dopamine. On the other hand, cocaine and amphetamines prolong the effect of dopamine on its target neurons. This is a disruption to normal communications in the brain. What all this means is that depending on how quickly each drug can get into the brain and how powerfully it activates neural circuits determines how active the drug will become. Heroin, for example, can create its effect on the brain almost immediately. It's the last drug you would ever want to take. It's very addictive. As individuals continue with addictive habits or substances, the brain will adapt. It tries to reestablish a balance between the dopamine surges and normal levels of the substance in the brain. To do this, neurons begin to produce less dopamine or simply reduce the number of dopamine receptors in the brain. The result is that the person needs to continue to use drugs or practice a particular habit. In an attempt to bring dopamine levels back to normal, an addict may also need to take greater amounts of a given drug to achieve a high at all. Dopamine is absolutely necessary for the healthy functioning of the human brain. Without dopamine creating feelings of pleasure in the brain, any of us can also become more sensitive to negative emotions such as stress, anxiety, or depression. Addiction can cause feelings of being physically ill. These addictive feelings can compound issues by compelling the user to increase drug use in an attempt to relieve their withdrawal symptoms. This holds true for psychological addictions as well as substance addictions. Eventually, the desire for the drug or behavior becomes more important than the actual pleasure it provides. And because dopamine plays a key role in learning and memory, it hardwires the need for the addictive substance or experience into the brain, along with any environmental cues associated with it such as people, 
Our best defense against addiction of any kind is realizing how prone to addiction our brains are in response to dopamine acting on the neurons in the brain. Just like with a house on fire, the best time to fight the fire is not in the middle of the blaze. It's in the preventative actions taken before the blaze has had a chance to start. To learn more, please visit the Institute for Addiction Study. Our link is in the description. 